Now we have the matrix to reduce, and it's helpful to see what the system of equations might be that corresponds to this matrix. Uh, so we write down the system, um, 3x plus 4y, and then we have another number here before the equal sign, the 6 is on this side of the equal. Well, alphabetically, let's call this variable z. 3x plus 4y plus z equals 6, 9x plus 5y plus 3z equals 2. Now, these equations actually give us planes in three dimensions. And where two planes intersect, you have a line. Okay? Uh, now, you don't have to totally understand that or why it is or how it's true. If you are, for example, in the engineering program, a year from now you'll be in multivariable calculus and you'll find out. Uh, but there is a three-dimensional interpretation. Instead of two lines crossing or being parallel or whatever, you have two planes. Okay. So, uh, if we reduce these, it turns out that we actually find the line where the planes intersect, which is kind of neat. Uh, and I didn't mention that in class. So, we reduce these. Now, we could solve these equations without putting them in an augmented matrix. Okay? We would follow, we could solve them by following exactly the same steps as we've already established with two equations and two unknowns. Uh, same thing is true. It doesn't matter how many unknowns you've got. Uh, if you've got too many unknowns, you'd better go with, like, instead of x, y, z, x1, x2, x3, so you can do x4, x5, x6, as many as you need. <coughs> um, okay, so we have this, we follow the usual procedure, um, and we just take one-third of the first equation, we get this, uh, and it turns out that these numbers here are the same as they were in the uh, system we just reduced, but we're doing it in a bigger system and it has a different meaning now. Okay, so uh, our steps are going to be identical to steps we've already seen. Third times the first row gives us this. And then we add to, uh, add the second row to negative 9 times the first, and we get this. The only new thing is negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. Now turn to this 2, add that to this 2, and we get our negative 16. And then we take 1 seventh of this row. Of course, the uh, negative 1 seventh, the 16 here, uh, does what it does. Um, and uh, then we, you know, we're systematically getting one here, zero here, then one here. So we've got the one, zero, one. We need a zero here. To get that, uh, we're going to take negative four-thirds times this row and add it to this, and here we've got it. Okay? And now we have this. What's our solution? Well, our solution is we, we actually have a number for y. This tells us that y is 16 sevenths. Uh, now that's, of course, 0x plus 1y plus 0z equals 16 sevenths. Um, but that just comes down to y equals 16 sevenths. Here we have a 0y and we have an x and a 1 3rd z and a negative 22 over 21. So we get x plus 1 3rd z equals negative 22 over 21. Okay? Now for interpretation, because this is yeah, actually quite interesting, uh, y equals 16 sevenths in three-dimensional space if you have uh, x, y, z, then y equals 16 sevenths is, if this is the origin, that's out here and that's a plane. All the points where y equals 16 sevenths lie in a plane through the point where y equals 16 sevenths, okay? And actually that was x, this is supposed to be y, so it's actually out here, the plane's here. Um, and then within that plane, x plus one third z equals negative 22 over 21. Well, that's a x z plane. It's located at y equals 16 sevenths. But this is just a straight line in that plane. Okay, we can actually, uh, if we solve for z, we multiply this. We get a z intercept that's pretty close to negative three. And we have a slope of 3, so it's a line in the yz plane having a slope of 3, I'm uh, sorry, in an xz plane located at y equals negative 16. And you have to 
listened to this several times and decode it to even have an inkling of what I'm really saying, but just telling you, uh, in case you want to know, that um, uh, the, the, the line is going to have a slope of 3 and it's going to have an intercept of negative 3 in that x and z plane. So it's going to be like right here. And that's where this plane intersects this plane. Now that's actually a topic for multivariable calculus, but it's really useful to know that at this point and at least think about it. So when you see this in multivariable calculus, you'll have a few neurons that fire, uh, which will make it much easier to understand everything else you're saying that's going on. Okay, now we're going to reduce this one. 